Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, Astro Ventures. Welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, I want to welcome you. My name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR or mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Skyguider Pro or the Star Adventurer. Now, today in this uh, episode of, uh, I guess, Comet Watch, because uh, that's two of them now within the last uh, 30 days, is we're looking at the Comet C2021A1 Leonard, or Comet Leonard. Now, Comet Leonard is coming up in the first week, the end of the first week of December. And it's going to have a very short window between where it reaches its peak and it quickly fades away and we lose it. So I wanted to get this out to you. Now, to locate it, uh, Comet Leonard is going to be located... Uh, just above the Boot constellation in the eastern sky. It's a little bit north of east in the eastern sky. And this is going to be a bit of a tricky one, and it's going to be ideal for you night owls out there. Because although the comet is set to peak in its brightness around the 6th of December, the problem that you're going to run into is that it's going to be sitting low in the horizon through that thicker atmosphere that you're shooting through as opposed to the ideal location of straight up above you. And with that peak on the 6th, not only is it lower, but it's also getting close to that window of time where the morning light is starting to throw things off. So... Keeping that in mind, the 6th, that's supposed to be the peak for it. However, personally, my plan is to go out and shoot this on December 4th, which will be Saturday morning, early morning on the 4th. And my reason being is, is that in looking at where the comet will be uh, between the 4th and where it will be on the 6th, on the 4th, although I won't hit the brightest point, it will be higher in the sky and I will be shooting through less atmosphere and I can get myself some additional time to shoot before the morning light is going to mess it up. So for myself, looking at shooting on the 4th, ideally I'm looking to start shooting at about 4.45 in the morning, my time here in uh, Utah, and then shoot up until uh, about 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock is when total darkness is ending and the first rays of light from the sun are starting to mess up the sky. So ideally, I should be able to pull off about an hour of shooting. My backup plan is to go to the 5th of December. However, the problem is, is it's going to be further down in the morning sky than it will be on the 4th. So for myself personally, I think the 4th is going to be my sweet spot of where to or when to shoot for it. Now, if you decide to go for this target, again, this is going to be a target that those of you without a star tracker uh, have a shot at capturing it. Uh, recommendations. Uh, if you are using a stock or crop camera, excuse me, a stock camera that is crop, and I would recommend crop for this, you get that artificial additional zoom, um, 300 millimeter lens will get you out to a 450 millimeter equivalency of what your image will be. A two second exposure at an ISO of 6400 and the widest aperture that you can go. Um, ideally, you know, F4 or the best you can do. If you have a star tracker, well, this opens us up to be able to shoot longer, less noise, and pull in some of the additional uh, color from the comet. Right now, feedback is, um, it seems to be giving off a green uh, coma off of the comet. Now, if you are shooting with a star tracker, I recommend ballpark starting point, ISO 800, 
Uh, two minute exposure at 300 millimeters. Again, there's no need for an Astro Modified if you have the availability of a, uh, of a crop sensor camera, I recommend you go for it. If not, you make, uh, if you're shooting with a full frame, then I would suggest look at going with a longer focal length, but Astro Modified is not needed for this. And when you start to shoot again, I my personal plan is I'm going to have everything in place and start shooting probably about 20 minutes to a half an hour before I actually um, intend to start shooting my usable data time. And this is what I mean. The Comet will start out, I plan to start shooting at about 4.15, 4.30. The Comet will be low in the east sky. It'll be shooting through, or I'll be shooting through that thicker atmosphere, but I'll start shooting then. Make sure I have good tracking, everything is working, the bugs are worked out. And then as I come around to about 4.45, 5 o'clock, that's my window when I wanna start shooting on the 4th, I know I've got everything rolling. And who knows, maybe some of that other data in the thicker atmosphere might actually be some decent stuff. We'll see. Now, the other thing is, um, and this, uh, depending on where you are, you need to try and get the darkest skies you can to the east. Now, where I'm located at here in northern Utah, I've got what we call the Wasatch Front, and that is where most all of the population is. So there's a lot of glow, and then the mountains reflect it back as well. So my plan is I'm heading east to get more east into the Rocky Mountains. And I might possibly even head to Wyoming because there's only like five people that live there. It's a pretty empty state with not a whole lot of population and city glow. But that's my objective. Get somewhere where I can get a clean, dark sky to the east. Um, so there you go. There's where it's at. I wish you the best of luck. If you do capture something, please share it with us with the hashtag of up in the night sky. We would love to see what you pull off. And hopefully, unlike the last comment, maybe I too will have some clear skies. Until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights. And Wyoming, we know there's more than five of you. We love you here. Until next time.